She's a, a carbon copy of Mum, really. A little bit of personality starting to sneak through as well. If I could start with any mare to breed from, I'd want to start with a good race mare. And they don't come with any better credentials than Winks. And then she's going to bred this beautiful daughter. It's very exciting for the owners and very exciting for us. In your time in English, has there ever been greater anticipation about the potential sale of a filly than there is for, for Winx's filly? I think there's more anticipation here than any of the others. Golden Super Day at Rose Hill. I'm standing in front of the magnificent statue of the all-time great Winx and her regular jockey, Hugh Bowman. Winx was so good, she made Golden Super Day her own over four consecutive years with her wins in the George Ryder Stakes from 2016 to 2019. She was so good, she overshadowed the Golden Super itself. We're joined by Hugh Bowman, who's back from Hong Kong, and it must be like coming home here on Golden Super Day, where Winx dominated for four straight years in George Riders. Four Cox plates, four Chipping Nortons, and now for George Riders. Obviously, I always have great memories of Winx and her achievements. And yeah, it's days like today when you just remember what a special equine athlete she was. It must make you feel proud every time you walk in the gates and you walk past that Winx statue. You're there on top of her, and that. She's there for eternity now. Her memory will live on, but she has one here at Rose Hill where she was trained for those amazing five years that she raced. Well, I've met Winx as a mum and I've met the filly. There's a lot of resemblances to her mother and she's very kind, very calm. Seems to have that demeanour that Winx had as well, but Winx's determination and professionalism was second to none. I, I wish the process well for her, her progeny and yeah I'm as excited as, every, as everyone else to, to see this really uh, go through the sales ring at Inglis in a, in a few weeks time. Winx's owners decide to send the great mare to Piero who stands at Coolmore Stud. Why? Well Piero was a champion racehorse himself. He won the 2012 Juvenile Triple Crown, the Golden Slipper, the Size and the Champagne Stakes. Piero drove through, took the lead in the slipper, gained holes months ago and Piero won it from Switzerland and Samarini. He was a, a beast of a racehorse, he did a great job on the racetrack and he's doing a, a mighty good job in the, in the stallion barn as well. So when this filly goes into the ring, you're not just buying a beautifully bred yearling filly by Piero out of Winx, you're buying into Winx's family and for generations to come, you can produce from the great mare Winx. Coolmore is a beautiful stud in the Hunter Valley. English have flown the media in two weeks before this filly walks into the ring at the English Easter yearling sales on April the 8th. It's not often that you would lay on a private jet to fly the media up to look at a filly. Like you speak to people who've been in the industry for decades and just over the last number of months since it was announced the filly would go to the sale to talk to those people about the significance of a horse of this quality with these credentials to be offered for public auction. Just very hard to emphasise how rare it is. Sons of good mares will come up for auction regularly. Daughters of good mares very, very rarely come up for auction. And I think that's what stimulated a certain amount of the international interest. So why is that? Why why? Well, breeding value. You know, mm. the value of her as a prospective broodmare in time is significant. You know, there's a chemistry in her pedigree that means that the likelihood is it's going to be a pedigree continues to produce good horses. Ultimately, she was bred to try and win a cox plate. Mm. We took a view on the mare that like begets like and wanted to try and breed a horse that gave her an opportunity to be another Winx or get as close as you can. You know, do we hope that she can be a record price filly? I suppose, yeah, we hope we she mm. can be. It's going to be tremendous promotion for our industry as a whole. I think there's an ever-growing respect for the Australian thoroughbred right around the world and I think the experience of this filly and the exposure that people are going to get to our market as a whole is only going to enhance that. Hello, this is Winx's filly. She's beautiful and the hope is that she'll top the record and beat 2.6 million dollars at the sale. So Tom, 
How exciting is it to have this filly of Winks? Uh, it's spine tingling. Um, obviously we had Winks go through here through the same barn just to think that we've done a full circle and now we're selling the first daughter of Winks. The one thing about this filly though, she keeps on improving and I think, you know, come sales time, you couldn't you couldn't get her any better. Why so much excitement over a brood man? Piero is a triple crown winner. He was a phenomenal racehorse. He's doing a good job as a stallion. Winx is something that, it's a household name. It's the greatest filly Australia's ever had. A lot of people from all over the world are interested in buying this filly. How about you, Tom? Well, listen, I'd be crazy to say I wasn't interested in her. She's, um, she's a collector's item but you're, you're gonna be fighting off the world superpowers here. It'll come down to two people at the end of the day and it, I don't know who those two people are gonna be. When she walks into the sale ring, what's that gonna be like? Uh, I think that is going to be like, if you think Taylor Swift going to a concert in Sydney was big, I think that in our game, this is gonna be bigger. Inglis won the race to sell Winx's Piero filly. This yearling is the most anticipated to be sold at an Australasian yearling sale in decades. I think there's more anticipation here than any of the others. In fact, the current record for a yearling filly sold at auction is 2.6 million. That was Belle Couture, Black Caviar's half sister. She went on to be a winner. So of course we would, we'd love the fairy tale. We'd like it to be a big number. Uh, but as long as it's higher than 2.6 million, uh, it'll be a great outcome. We've had 5,000 here for our opening nearly six years ago. If we get that sort of number, some people might be watching it on screens but they'll, uh, they'll enjoy the buzz. The veteran of our auctioneering team, Jonathan Darcy, you know, he has been an auctioneer with his company for uh, approaching 40 years. He's an outstanding auctioneer. He's sold here, he's sold internationally. He's very calm and collected, and he's very good at, uh, at, at working the room. And of course, uh, our sales, particularly the Easter sale ray, is all about the theatre. This is the famous William Inglis Yearling Sale Complex here at Warwick Farm Racecourse. This is where Winx's filly will walk into the ring on Monday, April 8. That's where the Winx filly will go, hopefully for many millions of dollars. Lot 391, the Winx filly is about to walk in to the famous sale ring at Inglis. Are you nervous? Oh, absolutely. No, I'd be nervous. I think um, our bid spotting team will be nervous. I think everyone in the room will be um, anticipating something special happening and hopefully the filly walks in, she enjoys the attention. We've got a, a, a unique setting here because there'll be four or 500 people seated at the tables. Uh, we've got buyers out the back of us here. We've got some gallery suites, seven or eight gallery suites there. We've got some of our VIPs up there in those gallery suites. So the bid spotters, I'll have seven or eight bid spotters working with me and they won't know where to look. We don't know who's going to be bidding on it just yet. We'll have some idea of you know, perhaps who are the, the main candidates, but until that bidding opens up, you just don't know what's going to happen. But if you've got three or four or five bidders and there's a lot of interest in, particularly this, obviously this Winx Billy, mm. and you get to a certain point and there's a pause, but you don't necessarily bring the gavel down, when does the auctioneer make that call? Enough's enough. If you feel it's it's required to build that suspense or to try and eke out one more bid, you will use something like that. I would hope to be able to elicit that last bid to ensure that she makes as much as we possibly can get for her. But at the end of the day, I'm in the I'm in the buyer's hands. Jonathan, you're in the auctioneer's rostrum. What can you see? Where's your focus? Is it on the filly? Is it on the bidders? Is it on the crowd? It's a bit of everything, right? I mean, I certainly will make sure as she walks in that she's settled and she's comfortable. I'll make sure that you know she's in safely. But as soon as someone starts bidding, that's where my concentration will go. An important piece of your apparatus is your gavel. How long have you had that gavel for, Jonathan? Oh, I've been selling with this probably around 25 years. This is an extension of me. So who will end up buying Winx's filly? It's hard to predict, a bit like buying a house, as to who wants to stay there to the very end, but I think Yulong will certainly look to try and secure this filly, as will most of the major Australasian breeding farms, but that international buying bench will be so strong, they'll be keen to get her as well. Remember, Winx was a phenomenon. She was famous worldwide, and you're not just buying her yearling filly, you're buying that family for generations to come.